I've begun to really see Dollar General as like a criminal organization. You're stealing from my community. And I think they're very aware of it. It's a classic bait and switch. Somebody at the top is making a lot of money. Go for a drive in any American county, and you'll likely soon pass by the yellow and black lettering of a Dollar General. Drive a little further, and another will appear. Then another, then another. Here's the other Dollar General store. It's seven miles from the last Dollar General store we were at. With nearly 20,000 Dollar General stores in 48 states, the Tennessee-based discount chain has sunk its teeth into lower income, rural and suburban areas everywhere. It's easy to look at the dollar stores and think they are a sign of economic distress or a symptom of economic distress, but what we found is that they're in fact a cause of it. Underneath Dollar General's so-called low everyday prices in convenient locations lies a sinister business model and a massive scandal that hardly anybody knows about. The fact that we have to sue a company to get them to tell the truth is absurd in my mind to begin with. My name is Lori Hartline. I am a Dollar General shopper out of convenience in my neighborhood. What you see here is when you travel, you'll go from looking for a grocery store and before you get one, you have $3 general options. And that's all you have. In May of 2022, Lori Hartline started noticing some seemingly harmless discrepancies while shopping at her local Dollar General. When they opened up in, I think it was 2021, their price of my kitty litter was $8.95. Great. I purchased it all the time. I didn't pay attention. I go up there, I check out, I leave. Well, one day, wait a minute, $10? I noticed it. I asked him about it. Oh no, they've raised the price. Well, that doesn't say it on the shelf. Well, they just have to change it. It's, it's in the computer, it's not on the shelf. Next week, go in and buy cat litter. Same thing. That is not what the price says on the shelf. What am I doing wrong here? I was watching the news one morning and heard about Dollar General in the state of Ohio was being sued for deceptive pricing. That is what happens to me. I knew I wasn't crazy. I know it's just not me. After months of repeatedly being overcharged by Dollar General, Lori wrote a letter to the Oklahoma Attorney General. And within two days, I got a response that they forwarded the letter. Um, great. They responded back. Dollar General did, and they apologized, and they said, we'll have a gift card for you. I said, okay, well, let me just ask, how much is it for? $10. Tell her to keep it. I don't want it. It was insulting. Lori's story was brought to attorney Mark Dan, where it became the basis for one of three class action lawsuits in Oklahoma, New York, and New Jersey. I don't think there's any question that Dollar General is doing this intentionally and systematically. June 22nd, I was overcharged four items out of 11. $7.95 was advertised $6.50. If you tell me one thing and then charge me something else, um, you know, in, in almost every jurisdiction in America, that would be theft by deception. Corporations, as we now know from the U.S. Supreme Court, are people, and people need to follow the law. Dollar General's deceptive business practices run deeper than most realize, according to Stacy Mitchell, a researcher at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. I think what they're looking for is places that have been, that, that lack you know, economic and political power, places that they can push around. They're often building in such numbers that it becomes impossible for a new grocery store or other locally owned businesses to develop in a neighborhood that really needs them. They kind of lock in poverty as they grow because poverty is the thing that really fuels these companies' uh, bottom lines. So we have the poorest people in the country going to a store that's deceiving them about the price that they're charging for goods um, in, in a situation where they have very few other realistic choices. I think it's about as exploitive a business plan uh, as I've ever seen. Almost every county in America and every state has a, a system 
for uh, making sure that people who uh, run cash registers do so honestly. Price verification is when we see that a product is listed for $299, take it up to the register, scan it, make sure it's ringing up as $299. Uh, we do a random sample of products that we pull. We're used to seeing one or two failures, getting it corrected uh, and, and feeling confident. Unfortunately, in Dollar General's case, it, it was uh, large and continuous. The scale or the concern was over 80% of the stores that we checked were failing and were failing repetitively and really no acknowledgement or desire to correct that failure. Despite being cited repeatedly, Dollar General neglected to correct the problem, prompting the Ohio Attorney General to file litigation against the store. One unique component in our conversation was the recognition of how Dollar General staffs or short staffs, staff were receiving no guidance uh, and were just kind of keeping the place open as best they could, not really necessarily aware of the price verification challenge, their duty and responsibility under Ohio law, and then opportunities to correct it. If you have designed a business where you are deliberately understaffing your stores, you're deliberately cutting costs, um, you're going to end up having these kinds of, you know, uh, widespread mistakes in pricing. I mean, that's just the reality of you are not actually providing enough labor to comply with the law and make sure that people are, are getting uh, charged what, what the price actually is. They have decided that they can make more profit by violating all of these laws, by understaffing, by cutting corners. And right now, the fines that are associated with doing that are simply a cost of doing business. They are too low to make a difference and to stop this organization from behaving this way. Dollar General has been fined over $20 million by states and the federal government since 2017. But those fines, which pale in comparison to the amount Dollar General has siphoned from communities, have done little to change the company's behavior. There are 19,000 stores. There are literally millions of transactions a day, uh, millions of items sold a day in Dollar General stores. And even if at 10% of the time they're stealing 10 cents on 10% of the items that are sold, uh, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars going into the pockets of, of Dollar General shareholders and out of the pockets of the poorest people in America. If you're a systematic violator of laws as a company, uh, what's the deeper way that we can go after you? At some point, you've got to be shut down if you can't reform your behavior, um, because clearly this, this one-off approach that we're using is not working. And I think that it's time for, uh, for Dollar General to pay the price civilly, uh, to pay the customers for what they've stolen from them, to change their business practices for how they go forward in the future. And I don't think it's, it's far-fetched at all to think that the corporate executives um, who, who hatched this scheme uh, ought to be prosecuted. They can build this little metal building in a week, maybe two max, and everybody's getting ripped off every day. It's only a quarter here. It's a dime here. It's 35 cents here. Who has the time to go and write a letter and complain over a quarter? Well, I do. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked this video. To see more stories like this one, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more More Perfect Union. And if there's a story you think we should investigate, let us know in the comments below.